so good morning children today we are going to discuss about uh, transfer section of dicot stem so in anatomy very important uh, points that are related to transfer section of dicot stem and monocot stem i am going to discuss today so if you take a dicot stem what are the different parts we will be able to see in anatomy means transverse section if you take a transverse section of a dicot stem we will be able to see three distinct zones like see epidermis cortex still i think you know very well this is epidermis cortex and innermost structure will be still so the three distinct parts of a dicot stem are epidermis cortex still coming to first outermost layer epidermis epidermis is single layered and epidermis is single layered it is made up of rectangular shaped cells arranged compactly without any intercellular spaces like this see rectangular shaped cells arranged compactly without any intercellular spaces this is called epidermis like this single layered rectangular shaped cells arranged compactly without any intercellular spaces see single layered rectangular shaped cells arranged compactly without any intercellular spaces and the epidermis is uh, covered by a thin layer of cuticul a thin layer of cuticul as it is dicot stem so as it is a dicot stem in dicot stem a thin layer of cuticle is uh, very important because as it is dicot stem so stems means uh, cuticle is very important because uh, uh, to reduce the uh, loss of water by transpiration cuticle will be protecting so a thin layer of cuticle is present on the covering the epidermis uh, so epidermis is single layered made up of rectangular shaped cells arranged compactly without any intercellular spaces and the epidermis is covered by a thin cuticle next coming to in the epidermis multicellular multi layered hair like structures are present these are known as trichomes so multicellular multi layered hair like structures are present these are known as trichomes i repeat in dicot stem multi layered multicellular hair like structures are present they are called trichomes so trichomes are also present in dicot stem trichomes are present that is on one more point next coming to few number of stomata are also present in the epidermis of dicot stem so in dicot stem epidermis few number of stomata are also present understand and in the stomata i think you know about stomata two guard cells will be present and uh, the uh, opening between two guard cells is nothing but stomatal aperture the two guard cells in dicot stem dicot stem the two guard cells will be kidney shaped so reniform or kidney shaped the guard cells are kidney shaped in dicot stem and the stomatal aperture will be present in between two guard cells so like that the very important points under epidermis of dicot stem will be including the dicot stem epidermis is single layered made up of rectangular shaped cells arranged compactly without any intercellular spaces and the epidermis is covered by thin cuticle trichomes multicellular multi seriate hair like structures are present they are called trichomes and few number of stomata are also present in the dicot stem coming to the guard cells of dicot stem are kidney shaped so these are the very important points covered under epidermis of dicot stem coming to cortex in between epidermis and still outermost layer pericycle in between epidermis and pericycle what are the tissues are present that all comes under cortex cortex will be having three distinct zones like hypodermis general cortex endodermis the three distinct zones of cortex are hypodermis general cortex endodermis so here see below the epidermis few layers of 2 to 3 or few layers of 
compactly arranged colon chymatous hypodermis is present. See, few layers of colon chymatous hypodermis is present in dicot stems and this colon chymatous hypodermis will be providing mechanical support to the dicot stem. So, what type of mechanical support it can provide to the stem is colon chyma tissue it will be having little bit uh, flexibility. Such that because of wind if the stem will be swinging this side and that side also the breaking of the stem will not occur that type of mechanical support will be provided by hypodermis that is a hypodermis which is made up of few layers of colon chyma. So the colon chyma is present in the hypodermis of dicot stems. This is very important point to be noted. Next to hypodermis loosely arranged parenchymatous tissue is present. This is called general cortex. This is called general cortex. And this few layers of parenchymatous general cortex, it will be arranged with intercellular spaces. It will be arranged, general cortex will be arranged with intercellular spaces. And this parenchyma, upper layers will be having leucoplas, sorry, upper layers will be having chloroplas. They will be synthesizing the food materials and lower layers will be having leucoplas they will be storing the food materials so this is about cortex the general cortex is made up of loosely arranged parenchyma cells so in dicot stems the general cortex is made up of loosely arranged parenchyma cells and this parenchymatous cortex with general cortex, upper layers will have chloroplast. They help in synthesis of food materials. Lower layers will have leucoplast. They help in storage of food materials. So that is about general cortex. Coming to innermost layer of cortex is endodermis. Remember, in the cortex, outermost layer is hypodermis. Innermost layer is endodermis. So, the innermost layer of cortex is endodermis. Endodermis is made up of barrel shaped cells arranged compactly without any intercellular spaces like this. And these endodermal cells will be storing starch grains like this. That's why the endodermis of dicot stem is also known as starch sheath. The endodermis of dicot stem is also known as starch sheath. So, that is about cortex. If you come to cortex, hypodermis is made up of a few layers of colon chyma. General cortex is made up of loosely arranged parenchyma. Endodermis is also made up of parenchyma but uh, they are arranged compactly without any intercellular spaces. They are barrel shaped cells arranged compactly and these endodermal cells they will be storing starch grains. Hence the in the dicot stems the endodermis is also known as starch sheath. The endodermis of dicot stems is also known as starch sheath. Coming to next innermost distinct zone of dicot stem is steel. The steel will be showing four distinct zones. Pericycle, vascular bundles, pithor medulla, medullary rays. Pericycle, vascular bundles, pithor medulla, medullary rays. These are the four distinct zones which will be able to see in steel. Steel is the central part of uh, dicot stem and the, in this steel four distinct zones like a pericycle, vascular bundle, Pithor medulla, medullary rays are present. We will discuss one after other. So, listen, Nana. If you take a, a pericycle, vascular bundles, pithor medulla, medullary rays, these are the four distinct zones which will be able to see in a steel of a dicot stem. So, See, if at all, if you go for steel of dicot stem, see in the ground plan, we will be able to see like this, epidermis, cortex and steel. And here, uh, trichomes, we will be able to see like this. And uh, see, this is steel. Central part of dicot stem is called steel. In the steel, outermost layer is a pericycle. And all the vascular bundles are arranged in the form of a ring like this. See? In the form of a ring like this. Centrally located pithor medulla. In between vascular bundles, extensions of pithor medulla will be occurring. They are called medullary rays. So, like this, if you see the ground plan, you will be able to understand properly. And uh, what I want to tell here is about first pericycle. See, 
like this we are drawing a sector enlarged i means in this ground plan we are taking one small sector this like this and this sector diagram we are seeing like this so in this sector enlarged we are able to see all the parts in the dicot stem trichomes cuticle epidermis hypodermis general cortex endodermis next to endodermis pericycle pericycle is in the form of semi lunar scleran chymatous patches like this see scleran chymatous patches semi lunar scleran chymatous patches like this this is about pericycle so pericycle will be not at all continuous it will be in the form of patches like here again one more patch scleran chymatous patch like this so pericycle is in the form of semi lunar means half moon shaped semi lunar scleran chymatous patches that is pericycle in dicot stems and uh, coming to in between two pericycles means in between two pericycles scleran chymatous semi lunar patches medullary rays will be coming parenchymatous extensions will be coming like this these are called medullary rays these are called medullary rays and coming to next vascular bundles i already told you 15 to 20 or 12 to 20 vascular bundles will be arranged in the form of a ring like structure around the centrally located pith this is pith or medulla around the centrally located pith uh, 15 to 20 vascular bundles will be arranged in the form of a ring like this this type of steel is called u steel the type of steel is called u steel so what is u steel is in dicot stems 15 to 20 vascular bundles will be arranged in the form of a ring like structure around the centrally located pith or medulla that type of uh, steel is called u steel in dicot stem we will be able to see u steel and uh, that type of u steel will be able to seen in dicot stems next if you come for each vascular bundle is conjoint collateral open type of vascular bundles i think you know what is conjoint collateral like this see in between xylem and phloem kmm is present then open vascular bundle and uh, xylem and phloem are forming into one bundle that is a conjoint they are lying on the same radius that is collateral so the vascular bundles in dicot stem are conjoint collateral and open type of vascular bundles means kmm is present in between xylem and phloem the type of vascular bundles are called open type of vascular bundles and the xylem present here is endarch xylem so what is the meaning of endarch xylem proto xylem towards center see like this proto xylem towards center meta xylem towards periphery like this so meta xylem towards periphery proto xylem towards center like this this type of xylem is called endarch xylem like this xylem is present xylem is present and that is about vascular bundles coming to pith or medulla see centrally located here the pith or medulla will be like this centrally located parenchymatous loosely arranged tissue which helps in storage of food material is called pith or medulla that is pith or medulla and this parenchymatous pith or medulla will be showing extensions in between two scleran chymatous pericycle patches so in between vascular bundles also these patches these uh, extensions will be coming so these parenchymatous extensions between vascular bundles are called medullary rays so what are medullary rays extensions of parenchymatous pith or medulla in between vascular bundles and also in between scleran chymatous uh, semi lunar pericycle patches that in between uh, parenchymatous rays are called medullary rays so these are the distinct zones we will be able to see in a transverse section of dicot stem like uh, trichomes see like uh, trichomes cuticle epidermis hypodermis general cortex endodermis pericycle endarch xylem so meta xylem meta xylem next lower one proto xylem in between vascular bundles medullary rays centrally located pith or medulla 
pithar medulla like this different parts distinct zones are seen in a transverse section of dicot stem important points are why the vas why the steel in dicot stems is also known as u steel and how many vas star bundles will be arranged in the form of a ring 15 to 20 and uh, what will be the vas star bundle condition conjoint collateral open type of vas star bundle as it is a stem that to dicot stem endarch xylem is present that is also very important point to be noted this is about a transfer section of dicot stem See children, now we are going to compare the transverse section of monocot stem with the transverse section of dicot stem. So, see in dicot stem already we discussed that epidermis, cortex, and steel. three very distinct zones and again in the cortex hypodermis general cortex uh, and uh, endodermis are seen and again in the steel pericycle of vascular bundles with or medulla medullary rays like this so many distinct zones are seen in uh, dicot stem but if you come for monocot stem only four distinct areas we will be able to identify one by one we will discuss that is uh, first about epidermis see in the monocot stem outermost layer epidermis just like in the dicot stem uh, rectangular shaped cells arranged compactly without any intercellular spaces like this but here what happens is uh, as it is a monocot stem here trichomes are absent but thin cuticle is present thin cuticle is present and also stomata are also present just like our uh, dicot stem stomata are present but uh, here dumbbell shaped so in guard cells the guard cells are kidney shaped in dicot stem but uh, guard cells are dumbbell shaped in uh, monocot stem so as this is monocot stem like this the guard cells will be in dumbbell shaped remember here the points are trichomes are absent cuticle and stomata are present guard cells are dumbbell shaped that is the only variation uh, between uh, dicot stem and uh, monocot stem that is about epidermis coming to next to epidermis there in dicot stem we saw few layers of colon chymatous hypodermis here here in uh, monocot stem we will be able to see two to three layers of sclerenchymatous chymatous hypodermis like this so two to three layers of sclerenchymatous chymatous hypodermis is seen like this that is a uh, c cuticle epidermis no trichomes stomata dumbbell shaped guard cells and this is hypodermis sclerenchymatous chymatous hypodermis next to hypodermis ground tissue ground tissue is parenchymatous loosely arranged uh, ground tissue is present uh, with intercellular spaces so only ground tissue is present see like this the transverse section ground plan if you see like this uh, epidermis will be present no trichomes so thin cuticle is not able to seen and uh, below the epidermis uh, a sclerenchymatous hypodermis will be present like this and um, all this will be of ground tissue all this will be of ground tissue made up of loosely arranged parenchyma cells and in the ground tissue the vascular bundles are arranged scattered irregularly randomly see two to three rings uh, peripherally small many number of vascular bundles will be present but towards the center the size increases but few number of vascular bundles will be present towards center periphery many vascular bundles are arranged towards periphery few number of vascular bundles are arranged towards center like this the vascular bundles are scattered in the ground tissue so this is the ground plan and uh, see here in sector enlarged like this we will be able to see so this is a epidermis a cuticle hypodermis this all this is ground tissue in the ground tissue the vascular bundles are scattered like this like this scattered if you see each vascular bundle each vascular bundle is surrounded by sclerenchymatous bundle sheath each vascular bundle is surrounded by sclerenchymatous bundle sheath so as each vascular bundle is surrounded by sclerenchymatous bundle sheath the vascular bundles in monocot stem are known as fibrovascular bundles fibrovascular bundles and each vascular bundle is surrounded by sclerenchymatous bundle sheath and each vascular bundle is conjoined means xylem and phloem are joined into one bundle 
collateral means they lie in on the same radius but closed that means cambium is absent as the cambium is absent the vascular bundles are said to be conjoint collateral closed vascular bundles with tender xylem conjoint collateral closed vascular bundles c c c means conjoint collateral closed vascular bundles uh, uh, without cambium as they are without cambium they are called closed vascular bundles as cambium is absent secondary growth is absent in monocot stems also see like this each vascular bundle is conjoint collateral closed vascular bundle with tender xylem means uh, proto xylem towards center meta xylem towards periphery see this is about xylem elements they are arranged in the form of y letter so the xylem elements are arranged in the form of uh, y letter like this see this is proto xylem and these are meta xylem below the proto xylem a large cavity is present this is called proto xylem lacuna proto xylem lacuna and this proto xylem lacuna is a lysigenous cavity means the cavity that is formed due to lysis of the cells hence it is called lysigenous cavity some books they give schizo lysigenous cavity most commonly we used to call this proto xylem lacuna is a lysigenous cavity the meta xylem and proto xylem elements are arranged in the form of a y letter like this and this is about xylem coming to phloem phloem will be present in between xylem and xylem meta xylem this is phloem and this is meta xylem and this is proto xylem and this is proto xylem lacuna like this uh, in the vascular bundle xylem and phloem are arranged on the same radius but in between xylem and phloem no cambium is present so very important points to be noted in the vascular bundle of monocot stems is each vascular bundle is surrounded by sclerenchymatous bundle sheath hence they are called fibrovascular bundles and each vascular bundle is having meta xylem and proto xylem arranged elements arranged in the form of a y letter and the xylem condition is endarch that means proto xylem towards center meta xylem towards periphery and here each vascular bundle it is conjoint collateral closed with the endarch xylem so this type of fibrovascular bundles are seen in monocot stem and all the vascular bundles are scattered in the ground tissue all the vascular bundles are scattered in the ground tissue so coming to monocot stem what are not clearly seen or what what structures are absent means see epidermis is present in the cortex hypodermis is present but instead of general cortex ground tissue is present endodermis is absent pericycle is absent pithor medulla is absent medullary rays are also absent so what are the structures absent also we should uh, clearly note down that uh, these uh, structures trichomes are absent uh, pericycle is absent endodermis is absent uh, pithor medulla is absent medullary rays are absent all these are absent in monocot stem and all the vascular bundles are scattered in the ground tissue so ground tissue is made up of parenchyma cells which are loosely arranged and helps in storage of food material like that parenchymatous uh, ground tissue uh, scattered third vascular bundles uh, sclerenchymatous hypodermis and single layered epidermis with the cuticle that much only uh, important parts uh, present in the monocot stem this is about the ts of dicot stem and also ts of monocot stem in anatomy uh, some uh, tissues doubts are there some people asked means in tissues means uh, special tissues they are asking that is out of syllabus no need to go for special tissues and if you go for tissues means only meristematic tissues and permanent tissues are there meristematic tissues they will be undergoing continuous division permanent tissues they cannot undergo division meristematic tissues will be Be converted into permanent tissues by a process called differentiation or maturation. Permanent tissues again, if at all needed, they can again convert into meristematic tissues, secondary meristems, by a process called de-differentiation. I think you know about differentiation, de-differentiation, and re-differentiation. Here the points to be noted are: under permanent tissues, what will be the different types of tissues coming? Under permanent tissues again, simple permanent tissues, complex permanent tissues, special tissues. Simple permanent tissues: parenchyma. colon chyma sclerenchyma 
complex permanent tissues xylem phloem from 10th class onwards we are studying about xylem and phloem coming to special type of tissues it is out of syllabus special tissues includes uh, uh, some nectar glands uh, osmophores uh, hydathodes uh, all these are included hydathodes only is important for you in second year syllabus under uh, water relations we will be discussing about hydathodes uh, guttation process there only we need this special tissues uh, otherwise special tissues is uh, out of syllabus you may not take any tension about these tissues and uh, all parenchyma colon chyma sclerenchyma are basic points uh, which you can easily identify if you read the points means you can get those points if you have any doubts ma in tissues or in anatomy you can contact me my personal number is 9494537 7959 so any long term students or senior outgoing students you can contact me ma uh, personally also you can keep your doubts uh, if you whatsapp me uh, if you want any information i will pass for you it's no problem uh, and uh, coming to secondary growth ma some people kept secondary growth also doubts are there uh, in next video i will be uh, keeping a uh, secondary growth for you uh, before that i want to complete a small topic uh, cofactors first later we will go for secondary growth okay ma so this is about anatomy transverse section of dicot stem and monocot stem comparison so many people are asking we are having some confusion please clarify if you have any doubts you can contact me personally also Okay ma thank you very much